Hi friends. I was shopping recently when I found this. Since it's a shark, I obviously had to buy it. And because I'm me, I also bought all of this. So this week we're doing sun catchers. I have no idea if this is gonna be interesting, but I wanna do it anyway. In addition to this shark kit, I also got this kit that has hamburgers, pizza, and donuts. That is the most disgusting looking donut I have ever seen. I also found these individual sun catchers, a pack of paint jars, and some paint pens. I wasn't sure what the difference is, so I wanted to try both. And of course I got some suction cups to hang the sun catchers. After unpacking everything, I had to fight with these stickers. Seriously, why do price stickers suck so much? This thing is gonna be see-through, so I can't have sticker boogers hanging out back there. Finally, we have these sun catchers, all of these pots of paint, some paint pens, a couple brushes, and whatever these pointy things are. First, I'm gonna start with this piece of pizza, and I'm gonna try out the paint pots on this first one. According to the instructions, the plastic sticks are used for scooping and spreading the stain. Starting with these white mushrooms, I use the flat end to scoop out the stain. Apparently, one end is meant for scooping and the other end is meant for spreading, but depending on how intricate of an area I was working on, I kind of just used both ends interchangeably. The stain was easy enough to work with. It doesn't spread uncontrollably, but it also seems pretty self-leveling. Sorry for the terrible angle where my camera can't seem to stop focusing on my fat hand in the way. After it was done, I set it aside overnight to dry. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna work on this hamburger. And I'm gonna try the paintbrush on this one. Starting out, and my camera is still losing its mind. Please don't have a seizure. I promise I figure it out eventually. As far as the sun catcher goes, I definitely preferred the scoopy stick to the paintbrush. I ended up mostly using the paintbrush as a scoop instead of a brush anyway. When I got to the bun, I wasn't sure what color to use. The picture on the packaging looks like there's a bun color, but none of these look like that creamy tan color. This is the set that came with the burger kit, and it looks like it has two of the same color, so I have no idea what to use. I just picked one and hope for the best. The last test I'm going to do is with the paint pens. This was a hard choice, because I really liked all the remaining sun catchers, and I didn't want to mess them up on a test. So I ended up going with the donut. First, I have to pull off this seal. Once I got my mouth washed out and all of the rest of the pen safely opened, I could get to work. I really like these pens. They're so much quicker and easier to use. They do occasionally blurp out a drop bigger than you expected, and they do seem to have more bubbles in the pots, but overall they're just so much faster and easier to control. I left all of these to dry overnight, and this is what I ended up with. Wait, hang on. Okay, so they weren't as self-leveling as I thought. And some of the colors are a little thin. I looked out on that bun color though, that could be worse. The painted spots seem a little tacky, even though they're completely dry. But overall, they came out pretty good for the first try. So next, let's finish the rest of the sun catchers. First, this shooting star. I stuck with the paint pens for these. There's not as many color options as there are with the pots, but I just wasn't willing to go back to the paint pots yet. I did get a little overconfident a few times and fill the stain too high. Luckily, the stain doesn't spread too much, so it's pretty easy to scoop out the overflow. I say that, but then this happened when I wasn't looking. Part of me wanted to just leave this to prevent making it worse, but I also wanted to see if I could actually fix it. So I used a tiny razor pen to scrape out all of that black stain. Then I went over it with another coat of yellow. It didn't come out flawless, but from far away, I don't think you'd be able to tell. However, 
When I was trying to touch up the pizza with the second coat, this happened. So I could have actually just pulled out the entire star section completely and started again. Don't worry, I did go back and fix that pizza. I was so excited to do this shark, but I couldn't figure out where to fit more than three colors on here. Some of the colors, like this white, are way more opaque, and I kind of wish that they had more of them like this. Like this gray could have been a little less transparent. After drying, this gray just gave me the finger. Even against the white background, you can barely tell it's there. I tried a second layer of the gray to see if that helped, and I mean, I honestly can't tell. Maybe? Next, let's do the ice cream cone. I'm doing everything but the actual ice cream first, because I was really thinking hard about what I wanted to do. For the ice cream, I wanted like a light pink color, like strawberry ice cream, but the only colors I had were a hot pink. So I decided to do a little experiment. I dotted both white and pink in the well and sort of hand mixed and swirled it around. It's not quite as light as I wanted it, but it's not too bad either. I don't exactly know what this swirly area is here, so I just painted it white. After drying, it came out so cute. I love the swirly pink. While this ended well on the ice cream, it didn't always. Remember that second coat that didn't work on the pizza? Well, that was lucky because I tried to mix white and yellow and it came out looking like someone vomited all over it. It's probably why the sun catcher rejected the paint. The last one I'm doing in this set is the narwhal. I had this overwhelming urge to make him rainbow. I wonder why. Based on what I've done so far, I knew that I could use multiple colors at once and they wouldn't just bleed into each other and turn into poop. So I just did my best to sort of swirl the colors back and forth to blend them. Some colors swirled better than others and some just looked kind of marbled. Like I kind of wish that that awkward green to yellow transition wasn't directly in the center of the narwhal, but the rest of the blends look really nice. So now we're on day three, I've made seven sun catchers and touched up or completely redid four of them. And I still have all of this paint. So of course I had to try to do this on my own. For this, I'm gonna use some clear shrink plastic and this simulated liquid leading. This is by no means a tutorial because honestly, I was just making things up as I went along and using what I had on hand but I decided to use shrink plastic because I already had it and it's a fairly structured plastic. Knowing that this stain is capable of peeling, I knew something flimsy wouldn't really work. It probably would have been better to use plastic that has actually been shrunk already and is much thicker and stiffer, but I was too tired for that. I also was too tired to wanna to draw something myself, so I took a page from a coloring book and used that as my template. I used this leading stuff because I already had it but there are probably a million different things you could use to make the lines. It just needs to be thick enough or able to layer enough to make a well. This part was insanely tedious. Like just outlining this took me about three hours. And I didn't film a lot of it because my head was bent completely over as close as I could get, trying to paint even lines with the equivalent of black slime. When that was finally done, I cut very gently around the edge. It wasn't without casualty, but a little bit of clear tape on the back fixed where the plastic cracked. I did plan out the top area so that I could punch a hole and that the sun catcher would hang evenly. Since this plastic is pretty flimsy, I taped it down to a piece of paper so that it would lay flat and everything would dry level. I tried to use the paint pens as much as I could for this. For some colors, like the white that were almost gone, I ended up scooping the paint from the white pot into the pen so that I could use it that way. Because the lines on this are nowhere near as thick as the store-bought sun catchers, I knew I needed to be really careful not to overfill any areas. But I also found that if I didn't fill them enough, the stain would pull together and leave blank areas, even if I swirled and pushed them to the edge with my pointy stick. I made sure to really keep an eye on this as it started to dry so that I could add more stain or push it around as needed. You had to know what I was gonna do the second you saw this, right? Stripes always equals rainbows in my head. The random bottles of fabric paint are holding the edges of the plastic down where the tape wasn't doing its job. I went back to the pots for the roses because I had a little bit more color selection and I wanted to see if I could create a tiny bit of dimension with different shades of the same color. It's not really picking up on camera, 
but I swear these colors did not look exactly the same in person. The final step, filling in the snake, was the most stressful. It was a pain getting the paint to stick to all the little areas around his spots and keeping an eye on it for about the first hour of drying to make sure it didn't pull away from any of the edges. Here he is all dry. I'm trying to be really gentle with him just in case, but I'm really happy with how he turned out. Even though he took so long to do, I actually really enjoyed it and I would totally do it again. So what do you think? I don't know if it was entirely entertaining to watch, but these were really relaxing and satisfying to do. And I still have a ton of paint left. These were definitely worth the money. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.